Hey everybody, welcome to Your Beautiful Table. Your Beautiful Table is a YouTube channel and a website all about helping you make your tables beautiful. Today I've got a little bit of a departure and we're gonna talk about how to make an office smell better when you share it with a smoker, so stay tuned. Thanks everybody for coming on back. If you're new to the channel, I'm really glad that you're here. Consider subscribing if you like content about home fragrance, candles, um, china, tabletop decor, those kinds of things, and little um, ways to make your life better and make your tables beautiful. So I'll let you know that I uh, recently moved and I've been trying out different filming locations in my home. And today I'm in a guest bedroom. Um, I like the light in here and I wanted to feature this painting. It's called Tomato Fight. You can see sort of the tomatoes getting uh, tossed around by my friend and Charlotte area artist Juan Marsh. So I'll put a link. Um, hopefully Juan has a Facebook page. I'll put a link uh, to that below, but just really great to be surrounded by art that's made by local artists. So friends, uh, today is Sunday and I'm kind of a little bit more dressed up than I normally am because in just a little while we're going to go to um, a Festival of Carols or Lessons in Carols, that's what it is, at church. And so didn't go to church this morning, but going this evening and enjoying some uh, holiday music. And earlier today we went on a hike at a local park, which was a lot of fun. And I've been doing some chores and just getting things cleaned up. And then after church tonight, I'll get ready. Um, I've got an uh, all-day meeting tomorrow that I'm kind of looking forward to, but it's going to make for a long day. So I wanted to go ahead and get a video out because I'm not sure that I'll be able to get one out in the next couple of days. So this is uh, related to a blog post that I wrote uh, a while back, but it was on my old site and I'm updating it for this site. And it was really helpful to a lot of people. So there are some of you who might be smokers and there's some of you who might uh, share an office space with smokers. And that's great. Um, you know, no judgment here, but those folks who smoke are probably aware that your clothes and your hair and your body sometimes smell like cigarette smoke when you come back in uh, from a smoke break. And many people are conscientious about that and they take uh, pride in the way that they present themselves and smell and um, uh, really make efforts like washing their hands, maybe just having a jacket that they use when they go out um, for smoke breaks or standing in fresh air. They really make efforts to um, ensure that the cigarette smoke smell doesn't come back into the office. But if you share an office space with a coworker or supervisor who uh, has um, the smell of cigarette smoke and it's bothering you, there are a few things that you can do. Now, there's a um, while the smell of cigarette smoke probably isn't harmful, of course, secondhand smoke has health concerns. So you want to be aware of that. Um, but uh, I'm just today we're talking about just um, the cigarette smoke smell and what you can do uh, to eliminate it in your office. So uh, one of the things that you uh, want to consider is why this is a problem. So if you're a smoker or you know someone who is, one of the reasons why the smell of cigarette smoke in your office may be a problem is a couple of things. One, it may be a trigger for folks who are trying to quit smoking. So if you've ever tried to quit, it's really hard from what I can uh, uh tell from friends who've tried to quit. And if you're smelling like smoke, uh, it can be a trigger for those folks who are in the office who are trying to quit. They smell it on your clothes. They think about going out and smoking a cigarette and can make it, make it really hard for them. So uh, reducing the cigarette smoke smell in your office is one of the ways that you can help support your coworkers who are trying to quit. The other thing is that there may be folks in your office who are sensitive to particular scents. And that is something that we should talk about in a, in a moment too. But so pregnant women, uh, folks who are on like cancer treatment, like chemotherapy, who have high levels of nausea or folks that have um, migraines are especially triggered by fragrance and scent. And so you want to be mindful of those folks in your office. And so if someone comes to you and begins a conversation with you about uh, the cigarette smoke smell. So don't take it as a personal affront. They may have a health condition uh, that's not just a preference, but really is impacting their quality of life when they're coming to you and asking about ways to help uh, diminish the cigarette smoke smell in the office or any other uh, fragrance for that matter. So as we're talking about that, one of the things that you can 
uh, there are several things that you can do. And I think I have six or seven solutions here. And there is a blog post that I've written. I'll link to it below uh, so you can check out uh, the blog post with more ideas. So one of the things, of course, to think about is talking to the person if you're sharing an office space with a smoker. Today's office spaces are a lot smaller. The cube walls and many offices have gone away and it's a wide open space and you may be very close to a, a, a coworker, especially if you're in a call center or a service support center, those kinds of things, you can be really close to folks. And so you just may wanna to talk to them. And so it may be around um, changing seats, maybe one thing, or they may not be aware because they're sort of scent blind to the cigarette smoke smell, they may not know that they're bringing it back in, even though they're trying really hard. So some of the things that they might be able to do is wash hands, change their coat, rather than standing right in the group of folks in the smoking area, they may be able to stand off to the side so the um, environmental smoke doesn't get on their clothes. So those are some things that you can do. So first thing would be to go talk to the person and say, hey, this is something that I wanna make you aware of. What can we do to partner together to help reduce the cigarette smoke smell in the office. It's not just like bothersome, but it really is causing a health problem for me. Um, and so be able to, you know, share personally, be open to that. And then if you're not able to resolve that, you may want to go to a manager or maybe an HR business partner, a human resources uh, professional to help you mediate or work through that, that conversation. You know, there's things like changing your seat or, a or moving to a different spot in the office um, that might be helpful just to uh, rearrange and not be near that if it's, a, if it's a problem for you. So one is Go to them and have a conversation and talk to them. Best to do it face-to-face. Uh, -face. Another thing would be a desk fan. So a desk fan can help move the air around and you may be able to direct air from other parts of the office or maybe even direct air away from you from the person that smells like cigarette smoke. So a small desk fan, they make teeny tiny ones. They're even ones with a USB cord that attach to your laptop or to your uh, uh, computer. And that may be something that you can do just beginning the airflow. Another thing related to that might be an air purifier. So many office environments have uh, heating and cooling systems that are filtered and they may um, have some sort of air purification that happens and also uh, white noise. Um, but you may want to have or consider a desktop air purifier. So in my office and maybe like yours, any of those kinds of appliances have to be approved by our facilities manager. And so you may want to partner with your manager or an HR partner to um, have a conversation with them about uh, why you need the uh, particular appliance and make sure that it's compliant with your office um, sort of rules of the road, so to speak, in terms of the appliances you can bring into the office. So uh, that's another thing. So desk fan and then a personal air purifier. Now, if it's just the scent that's uh, um, bothersome, one of the things you might con uh, consider is adding additional scent to help reduce the scent of the cigarette smoke. So reed diffusers are one of the things I often see in office environments to help add a pleasant um, fragrance. So having a reed diffuser, a small one on your desk, you can control the amount of fragrance with the number of reeds that you add. So more reeds, more fragrance, fewer reeds, less fragrance. And so that may be something that you can keep in your personal space. A reed diffuser is something that doesn't require electricity, doesn't require flame. So I'm not even talking about candles here because candles are sort of just a no-no in most office places because of the fire hazard. So reed diffuser is one of the things that you might want to consider. So also plug-in diffusers. So they make, you know, Glade plug-ins is an old school trick. You know, uh, stick-ups is another one that, you know, you may be under your desk, but those are sort of old school. If you want a more curated and personalized fragrance, they make a lot of interesting um, plug-in diffusers these days. And so you may find one. There are two that um, are of interest to me. One is called Scent HD. And so this is one that has a, um, it's a particular appliance that you may want to check out and very, very uh, new on the marketplace is called Pura. And Pura is a um, plug-in air freshener device where you have uh, refills or cartridges of your favorite fragrances. Nest Fragrances has a ton. I know Bath and Body Works. So there's lots of fragrances that you can use in them. So Pura may be something for you to check out. I think you go to trypura.com and it will share with you about it. I think the device itself is about $40. And then of course the refills or chargers, cartridges are uh, an additional expense. And the cool thing about Pura is that you can use your um, iPhone or your um, smartphone. There's a downloadable app. 
you're able to say, turn on it this time, turn off it this time, adjust the amount of fragrance. So there's a lot of personal control. So if you are working from home one day or if you're out of the office, you can turn your Pura device off. Or if you're um, wanting to turn it on and have it more intense during different parts of the day. So imagine, you know, your coworkers coming back in from smoke breaks at a particular time, or maybe they're coming back in from lunch. That may be a time where you want to crank up the fragrance. And there may be other times when you're like in a meeting or away from your desk when you want to uh, turn it down. One of the things about reed diffusers and that Pure device, any sort of plug-in that's adding fragrance to the office environment, is you want to talk to the people in your space. So, you know, in a in the same way that you may have a sensitivity or aversion to the cigarette smoke smell, other folks may be sensitive to the fragrance, even though it's really pleasant, may have an aversion to the fragrance that you're adding. So you may want to have a conversation about a fragrance blend or a particular fragrance that works for everybody. Um, let's see, cotton balls with scent. That's another sort of old school way. So you may have a uh, favorite personal fragrance or maybe an essential oil and you can put a couple of drops of the essential oil on a couple of cotton balls tuck it into your desk drawer or maybe um you know if you have a, a mobile desk you can keep it in a small uh dish on your desk imagine just a couple of cotton balls dabbed with essential oils or maybe your favorite personal fragrance so perfume or cologne a spritz on there and it will um be a small space um to add a fragrance. And so it's not like spritzing all the air, you just spray the cotton ball and it lasts for a little while longer. So I found that to be a helpful trick, especially in desk drawers that are a little bit musty or, or, or smelly, especially if somebody's moved out, they've had different things in that desk drawer, you can put uh, some fragrance, a couple of drops of essential oil, your favorite blend, drop it into your desk, and then um, that sort of fills the, the room. And that's one of the ways that you can add sort of a milder, softer approach to fragrances with, um, with sort of uh, those cotton balls. And then room mist. Uh, you may go with old fashioned route, sort of uh, grocery store kind of air fresheners, um, Glade, um, Airwick. Um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the one that is uh, removes the scent. Uh, uh, Febreze, those kinds of things. So those might be um, one of the ways. You can also use um, essential oils in a small bottle to make your own fragrance mist, mix it with a little bit of water, shake it up, spritz, spritz, spritz. That can be really great. And those are some of the places where you have a lot of control over the intensity of the fragrance and uh, the fragrance mix and with the essential oils. So that may be uh, one of the routes is to make a room mist uh, that's just local that you spray maybe around yourself um, that's made from essential oil. So uh, also um, personal fragrance products, so hand lotion, those kinds of things in your desk, maybe a way to add a little bit of fragrance just in your own personal uh, scent bubble so that you can enjoy. So um, some uh, hand lotion that has a nice scent uh, might be just enough to sort of diffuse the uh, cigarette smell in the room and that way you'll be able to enjoy that too. So when we talk about the, the personal fragrance and those room mist or the uh, home fragrance freshener that you're using in the office, one of the added benefits of that may be aromatherapy. So a lot of fragrances have different aromatherapy attributes. So the citrus fragrances, bergamot, lemon, um, orange, those kind of zesty kinds of fragrances are going to help invigorate you. So if you want to um, spray them in the morning, that may help you get the day started. If you got a slump in the afternoon, you've gone out for a heavy lunch, you come back in and you want to have a little bit of pep, um, those kinds of scents might be helpful. Uh, also, um, when we talk about uh, uh, essential oils, you may have some that you want to help you relax. So lavender, chamomile, those kinds of things may be scents that you want to use in the workspace that will help you relax and de-stress. Um, lavender is like quintessential relaxing um, essential oil. So that's one to think about. Now, some folks have atomizers or nebulizers that they're able to put on their desk. And these are small units that aren't generating heat, but rather there's a small like motor inside of them that's generating a fine um, sort of fog or mist. And that's another way for you to add a few drops of essential oils into that um, sort of personal uh, atomizer or nebulizer that you just keep on your desk. So it creates a, a small fine mist. It will be in your own personal space. But again, 
that's going to float out into an open office environment. You want to be sure that your friends and neighbors and colleagues, coworkers are okay with the scent that you're using and it doesn't uh, bother them. They may, if with a conversation, may be really open to it. Uh, they may say, hey, you know, rather than lavender, I really don't like lavender. Why don't you use citrus? And you're able to come to some compromise rather than just charging ahead and then them saying, you, you can't have that at work. So if you have a conversation about it, it on the front end, it may be better. So Friends, those are several ways that if you have uh, someone in your office that is a cigarette smoker and they come back in from the smoke break, they uh, smell like cigarette smoke and it's bothersome for you. Those were several ways that you might consider uh, adding a little bit of air fragrance into the room. You can hear Buddy and Sammy barking in the background. So friends, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And if you like content like this, consider subscribing to this channel and we'd love to have you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.